Hi everyone, my name is Billy LaGuardia, and uh, I am a recording engineer based in New York City. And uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, mixing a live recording in Nuendo 6. Um, we're working with an artist today called Blair and Company, and um, this is a live recording that I did at a club in New York called Drum. Um, I, I handled the recording with a um, mic split, so this is um, everything that you see or, or everything that I recorded with the band. Um, the band is a uh, drummer, bass player, two guitars, a vocalist, a sax player, and a uh, trumpet player. So we're looking at channels involving a five-piece drum kit, bass guitar, the two guitar channels. Um, this is kind of an interesting band because it's uh, the sax player has uh, a pedal board that he uses. Um, so it's it's pretty cool. We have a clean we have a clean sax and a dirty sax and then a trumpet. Um, and there's also some room mics. Uh, so today we're just going to look at um, just a session that I that I have uh, set up already. Um, this is a this is a template that I that I use. Um, we're just going to start at uh, from my starting point and go on to mixing. Um, so the first thing that that I have in in my session is I have all my channels laid out. Uh, these are the white the white faders here, um, and I just did a quick, just did a quick rough mix just to kind of get everything um, sitting where I wanted. Um, everything goes down into groups, which are the blue faders, and the purple faders are my effects uh, returns. Um, I've got my two output faders here. I have this one called stereo out, which is um, my my two bus. And then I have another one that's stereo out too, and that's just uh, feeding the recorder for screen capture. So um, the first thing that I like to do with a session like this, obviously, is create all my groups. These are uh, these are done in my template um, already, just to, to save some time. But um, I break everything out pretty pretty individually in groups. I would rather mix from my groups instead of my individual channels. Um, and reason being is I like to have my plugins, especially compression, on um, my individual channels for certain things. Um, I, I like to set it up basically like a live console um, so that the groups are more of a VCA than a group. Um, and if you're not familiar with, with that terminology, um, uh, the VCA basically is an electronic control over, over things. Um, whereas a group is more of a sum. Uh, the VCA is more of a remote control. So what that means is, uh, let's say I have a, uh, a compressor on my lead vocal, and um, I have a compressor as an insert on my lead vocal, and I am, when the singer digs in, he's really slamming the compressor. I can take that compressed sound and take my volume down here without it without affecting the gain stage of my vocal hitting my compressor in the channel strip. Um, you can use you can use these groups more as a true group, um, whereas if you put a compressor on the group, you can you can leave uh, your lead vocal channel at unity, and uh, you can mix it from the actual channel so that as the singer starts to dig in, you can hit a compressor harder. Um, it's it's just a flavor. You can do it uh, any way that you like. Um, I like to do things uh, as a hybrid approach, whereas like guitars and bass and uh, vocals, I like to have compressors on the channels. But for things like uh, my overheads, um, I like to put it at the group so that if I if I ride um, uh, an overhead channel harder, it it uh, will not go in the compression unless I'm driving it hard. Uh, the other thing is with the room mics, I like to do that too. Um, I have uh, a couple of effects set up down here. Um, I have a, a small reverb, which is just a waves convolution verb uh, set. And I'll show you these. A convolution verb set to small room. I use the stock. Uh, I use the stock settings. I don't really mess with it too much. Um, I have my reverbs that I like to use, and I, I just stick with them. Um, I have a medium reverb set up, which is a... Um, Waves uh, Renaissance R verb, which is just set to the warm or the big warm plate setting. Um, again, just totally stock. Sometimes I'll, I'll mess around with the pre delay, but I really don't. I really don't change these very much because I like the way they sound. Um, 
my my large verb I have an Oxford uh, reverb that's set to Hall Silky, which uh, the Oxford uh, reverb is amazing. There are a lot of really cool programs in there that I use a lot, but uh, for this one I really like to use the Hall verb. Um, I have a pitcher uh, slat delay, uh, which I'm using an Eventide H3000 for, uh, just to do that. And I just have a straight up delay, um, which I'm just using a um, just using a regular uh, super tat. Um, I like to set this up in ping pong, and I usually just I'll mess with the feedback if it if it uh, if it calls for it. But again, I leave it pretty stock. Um, one thing that I, I will say about the uh, the super tap that is um, something that I like to do is I like to take the direct sound off uh, so that you're not putting a, a direct sound in there because we're using it as a send. If you're using it on an individual channel, the direct sound could be cool, but I, I have found that I like the way it sounds where we just are controlling a, a, a wet send, um, just a, a saturated, just the reverb, or excuse me, the delay only. Um, so I do like to do that. And then obviously we'll tap along to, uh, to sync the delays up to time. Um, excuse me. So I have a, a time, I have a time uh, centric delay, which is my super tap. And then I also just have a, a millisecond delay um, that is just the program in the H3000. Uh, I like, I like to have, uh, this, my H3000 as a delay, uh, effect that, um, that it sticks out. It, uh, it doesn't blend as much. Um, it, it gives it, it's more of a spatial thing than a, than a time thing. Um, and I like to have my delay, my super tap delay, uh, set up as, as more of a time delay where I can, um, I can change its, its, its note value to make it stick, uh, stick out or blend in. Um, if it's uh, if I'm doing a vocal line, I like to use a quarter note delay. Um, if I want it to blend more, I uh, will use an eighth note delay. But sometimes I like to do my subdivision with the tempo instead of actually changing the note value. So instead of um, if, if if it's if I'm assigning it as an eighth note uh, delay, um, I'll tap my uh, BPM in 60 instead of 120. Just as an example, I'll assign it half the value instead of changing the uh, the note value. It, it's just a feel thing. Um, sometimes I like to automate my delay tapping, but uh, just for the sake of, of, of moving on this, it's, it's just set up in a ping pong delay, uh, and I'll tap the tempo in when I start adding delay. So um, I feel like every engineer likes to start their, their sessions differently. Uh, the first thing that I like to do is um, I like to uh, call up a comp uh, two compressors. Um, so the way that this, this session is set up is I have everything bust down into groups, and then I have a master group. Um, the master group allows me to have compression on uh, as my master insert, and it will allow me to hit my master fader differently. Uh, a lot of people put, um, they put compression on their master fader, but if you are pulling your master fader down, you're taking it out of compression. So I like to use a master, um, it's a master group in this instance, where I can choose how hard I want to I want to hit my compressor, and then I can take this down. Um, that's important, um, so that I can I can drive my master compressors into compression, and and get a zero dB rating here, but I can take I can take this down so that I'm not I'm not slamming a um, a limiter. Uh, so that when I send this off to mastering, it's not uh, it's not uh, limited to death. I, I can take it away a couple of dB away from from zero, uh, so that the mastering engineer can actually do something because his his limiting uh, is going to be better than mine. Um, so the first thing that I like to do is I like to pull up two compressors. Um, first is um, I like the SSL bus compressor. Um, so we'll pull that up. Let's go into dynamics. And we'll select our SSL comp. Um, now this is a very cool plugin, but I, I feel like it, uh, although there are a million ways to use most things, this one is is pretty tried and true. You have to you have to use it a pretty certain way if you're going to put this on your master bus. Um, and and here's here's the trick: you take your attack and you put it all the way to one millisecond, and you put your release to auto. Um, Every time I've tried to use this compressor outside of that configuration, it sounds terrible. <laughs> um, and and every engineer that I uh, that I know 
that uses an SSL bus compressor compressor or like an Allen Smart, they use it in this way. Um, so the first thing that I like to do is uh, is um, I like to um, take my threshold all the way down to plus 15 so that we're not really hitting it. And I'll take my makeup gain to zero. Um, so we don't really want to add any makeup gain. So let's let's listen to our track and we'll level we'll level match. Take my compressor out. So I'm just taking my master my master bus fader up. We're gonna take my master fader up also and put that to zero. So we're not getting any compression here, and we're not, uh, we don't have any volume added. Um, so let's take our threshold down a little bit, just to get the units to start compressing. Okay, so we're getting, uh, according according to the meters, we're getting uh, peaks of maybe 3 dB of compression, which is cool. And you know, we, I went back and forth and took it in and out of, uh, took it in and out of the the signal chain just to make sure that we weren't changing our gain stage uh, too much. Um, so we'll put him over here. Um, I'm doing this on one screen today, uh, just so that um, just so you can kind of see everything. Um, I I most of the time. I most of the time keep this as uh, as two monitors. Um, the next thing that I like to do is I like a good stereo uh, compressor. Um, I my personal opinion is I like the API twenty five hundred. Uh, that's a compressor that I've used a lot, and I really like the way it sounds, and it uh, is is perfect for uh, for a two bus. Um, so. First thing I like to do, I think it all should be should it should also be noted that I, I usually take the analog emulation off of uh, off of these compressors. Um, so the first thing that I like to do is when I'm setting this compressor up is I like to take it out of stereo link. Um, if you're if uh, a word of advice, if you're doing anything that is truly uh, a stereo field, you want each side to compress differently. Um, if you don't, it will take, say that you have a guitar panned hard left, and it's really, really something that's going to activate the compressor. If you have this compressor in 100% link mode, it's going to uh, compress your, your opposite side hard, um, and you don't want that. If you're doing that, you might as well just use a mono compressor. So uh, l let's first, we'll take this into independent so that the, the sides are functioning independently. Um, the other thing is the API compressor is pretty cool because it has a couple of, of tonal things down here. Um, there's a, uh, a, a tone feature that says loud, medium, and normal. Loud, obviously, is it is very aggressive and apparent compression. Um, medium is medium, and normal is, you, you know, it's a very, very smooth compressor. Uh, the knee of it is, is also that, too. A hard knee is not very apparent, whereas a soft knee is very apparent. And it just depends on the track about how much compression do you want to hear. Um, for me, being a two-bus compressor, I don't really want to hear the compression. Um, the the SSL compressor for me is a tonal thing. Uh, I like I like the what it what it does tonally in in terms of giving it that very squishy compressed sound. Um, the API is a very fast compressor, and uh, it's it's designed to be used on a bus, uh, just like this is designed to be used on a bus. So let's dial this in. Um, a, a word of advice, I usually like um, fast attacks and, and slow, or excuse me, uh, <laughs> uh, fast attacks and slow releases on my two bus, um, just because it's, it's going to clamp things down. Um, the fast attack will take a transient, whereas if you move a slower attack, it will, it will give it less an apparent sound. So let's uh, just goof around with this compressor and see what it sounds like. <laughs> So our threshold is at plus ten, so we're not we're not compressing at all. So let's let's take our our threshold down. Okay, 
comes back when it rains. Let's bring our SSL compressor over just to uh, make sure that neither compressor is, is, is moving too hard. And let's see what they do to each other. To uh, one second release time. Increase our ratio a little bit to make it more of a limiter. in our hi-hat when we go to loud it really nails that hi-hat down get more high-end this is very subtle but if you listen to the ride symbol when we go through these settings like the medium setting, it seems to let that uh, that ride symbol poke through a little bit. Let's take a little compression off. So if we notice, our, our compressor is, is hitting the kicks. It's hitting our kicks and our snares, and it's getting in, it's compressing them, and it's, it's also getting them out of the way, which I like. I like that a lot. I am not interested. This is this is just uh, as a glue piece. This isn't uh, this isn't um, something that we want to we want to really make something compressed. Um, the other thing that I like to to call up is uh, I like the Waves uh, PAZ analyzer. Um, I put this on my True Two bus, um, so I can see the the final thing, uh, the final signal path that's that's going to uh, that we're going to export. Um, so what this does is it is it shows us a vision or a, a, a visual aspect of our stereo field, and it also is an, an RTA uh, saying what uh, real time analyzer that's uh, showing us what frequencies are, are present. Um, so I like that because it, um, it it shows us when we're when, when we're EQing individual instruments what uh, what what's what's happening. Um, so I like to keep this. I usually like to keep this up too, just to kind of see what's going on. Um, so as you can hear the track, it's it's a cool um, it's a cool funky track. Um, we we gave it a I gave it a, a solid listen. I I don't like to listen to the track too too much uh, before we start uh, mixing, um, just so that it it's it remains interesting to me. You know I, I think that if if you listen to something over and over and over and over and over again, you need to you need to kind of understand that it's uh, you're gonna you're gonna be with this project for a while. So. Um, I, I like to kind of discover discover the song as we go. Um, there's a lot of guys that like to um, to, to mix in a in a, in a loop. Um, I don't really like to do that. I like to listen to the whole song and see how it's all gonna uh, react. So um, let's uh, let's let's take a let's let's leave this as part one. Uh, th so this is this is just our our session setup. Uh, our session setup. Uh, the next section we're going to look at the drums. <laughs> 